Hi guys, welcome to the garage uh, on the channel. I'm going to do a video today on. Uh, oh, I sound like a teacher. God, that sounds bad. I'm not a teacher. Right, but I am going to do a video today on um, diesel injectors. These are the uh, these are out of a two and a quarter diesel. Um, these old mechanical injectors. It's the same principle um, from most of them. Uh, PD injectors are that again. A hell of a lot more complicated, but these these just old style that are driven off a mechanical pump. Um, they, they, they're really simple. They're not to be scared of at all. Um, the only thing you, you really need is a is a pop tester, uh, an, impre uh, an impression, a, comp a pressure tester, which is this machine here, which I'll, I'll show you in a second. Um, I'm going to get it set up. It's uh, basically. How it works for the um, for them that just don't know, because not you can't know everything, can you? Is uh, you pump, you got your, your diesel pump on the side of the engine. I haven't got one here, so, so you got your diesel pump on the side of the engine, rotary rotary pump on the side of the engine. Um, a, sorry, a distribution pump on the side of the engine. This obviously like a rotary pump um, that dis distributes the fuel under pressure to each injector. At the right time, at the correct time. Um, well, providing the timing chain is called everything's where it should be, it'll be the correct time anyway. But um, yeah, and it comes in from the pump in there down into the down into the side here. And inside here, there's um, you'll feel if you touch the end of it. There should be a point on the end. If there isn't a point, then you need a new nozzle. Um, but yeah, and it pushes that no that nozzle is spring loaded. The pressure of the fuel coming in pushes that nozzle up, there's a spring inside there and then allows fuel to squirt out the bottom of it under high pressure and it should atomise, it should spray out um, in all directions equally uh, there shouldn't be any big blobs or anything like that, it should be perfectly uniform um, and that's all, all, all fine and dandy but what tends to happen is they can get you can get carbon build up in there Sometimes running over with wire wool, uh, wire, wire wheel or wire brush can clean it off. But um, yeah, you get carbon build up there. You can get carbon build up inside, which jams the um, the nozzle open, so then it constantly drips. Um, or it can so it's it's only squirting out at, at various different angles, and um, so then it doesn't atomise properly. So uh, have to, forgive me, I've got a cold. It doesn't atomise properly and. Uh, so therefore it doesn't burn properly, it doesn't mix uh, with the fuel properly. Uh, and it can also, uh, because this is part of the, the, the timing for the engine, if it's set so it opens, I think it's, uh, it's around 2000 PSI that it opens, uh, near as makes not much difference at all. Um, so if you've got that set, so that's opening 500 psi less, it will open a fraction of a second earlier. Because it's, it takes a fraction of a second, I think it's something like 4 degrees rotation um, of the cap, or something like that, uh, for it to, to fully open. So if you've got it 500 psi less or more, whichever way you want to go, it'll either take longer or to open, or it'll open sooner, and therefore the timing will be out by a couple of degrees. And with these engines, four degrees is a lot. Four degrees means the difference between smoking and not smoking, uh, and, and, and power and, well, I said power loosely, it should be no power and less power but, uh, yeah so I'm going to try and get these apart the first trick to getting these apart is getting is getting that bit off the top of there they can be an absolute pain in the arse to, uh, to get off but what you have to do is grip it in the vice but there's a specific way to do it and me being a numbnuts did it wrong with uh, I did it wrong, I've got some spare injectors so it's not the end of the world. Um, 
and I don't know if you can see there on on this side there it's a bit it's a bit chaveled up um, a slight neck of the thread and now the pipe does not sit on there you put pressure through it and it squirts fuel out everywhere I killed that injector from my own stupidity um, just not concentrating basically and that was a good injector as well uh, so yeah, I have to source another one of them from, um, I haven't got them here, I've got them at home uh, in my garage. So what I'll do is I'll clamp this in, I shall I'll wipe that off there. What I shall do is get you set up so you can actually see what I'm doing. Right, so what I'm going to do to get this, obviously to, to undo that, you need to turn it that way like that. Now what you don't want to do is be putting pressure onto this thread. So you need to turn it that way. So if you put it in the vise and chuck it in the vise like that, this is a very good vise for it, it's not wide enough. But um, when you try to turn that with your big spanner, Stilson's, whatever you adjustable, whatever you've got on there, you're gonna be putting pressure on that thread there, which is what I did. What you have to do is trap it that way round, like that. So when you turn that, when you're trying to loosen that, you're trying to push that away from the vise and not into the jaws, away from the jaws. So it puts the pressure on that point there, and that point there, and not that. If you could do it like that, I mean, you, you'll trap it in there, you'll trap it up against there, like that, there is no avoiding it. I'll see if I can, uh, see if I can do it now. See, see that's trapped in there, but once you've got real pressure on there, and trying to turn it so far again, it's what I ended up using to, to get them off uh, with a big bar on the end of it. As I'm pulling that that way like that, it's pushing that away from the jaws of the vise. If it was the other way around, I'd be pushing it into the jaws of the vise, and that's how you knacker the threads up. It's important because then that's, if you knacker that up, you've then got to buy a whole new injector. So, first thing you want to do anyway, I'm jumping ahead of myself a bit here, is test your injector. So, walk this way. This is where this contraption comes in. Commonly known as pop tester. Did I say compression test injector? No, pressure test. Um, yeah, commonly known as a pop tester or diesel injector tester. So basically all you do is screw that on there like that. It, there's not many ways around it. This, um, I don't know if I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I probably should have done. This this whole thing was sent over to, to me from uh, by a guy called Tim Trimble in uh, in Pennsylvania, USA. Uh, very nice guy. Uh, he sent me a couple of things over now. Very generous guy. Um, it's much appreciated. This will be used. And uh, as, a, as a thing, if anybody, I'm in the South Yorkshire area, if anybody brings a set of injectors to me, I will test them for free till the end of the year. Just because uh, one good turn deserves another. So if you can bring a set of diesel injectors to me out the engine, because that could be a job by itself, um, I'll test them for you for free. And if they're good, I'll set the pressures for you as well. Right, so what we're looking for is the pressure that it pops, that the that the uh, injector pops at, which must be around 2,000. Yeah, you can see that. Uh, let me get you down so you can actually see the spray pattern there. Um, I don't know if you can see, let me get you even lower. Come on, stoop down to my level. I forget this stunt to work, what do you else? Got little latches on the legs. So where are you going? And down there. What do you think? Sorry guys. This is going well. Right. You can see it's dripping a bit there. You will get diesel everywhere. What are you looking for? When you're pulling the lever down, you need to pull it quite sharp. You put the rag over there so it's not. And you're looking for an even spray pattern. Now you can't see because the rag's in the way. That to me, 
Can you see how it's squirting out to the side there? It's just on the side there, it's just squirting out a little bit. So, not bad, not horrendously bad, but enough, while we've got them in bits, it's enough to, to warrant uh, cleaning them up. So, let's get this apart. Right, same injector. What we're gonna do, we're gonna dismantle it completely. Start with the, the nut for the spill pipe. The cap off the end of it. Then there should be a copper washer, a big copper washer. You get a copper washer down on, down on this end. Sometimes it'll be a pain to get off. We'll have a look at that in a second. Right, this in this end, this is your adjuster. This is what adjusts the pressure. Right, so in there, you get diesel, obviously, a spring, and a plunger. All that does is goes down there, and that's what plunges you. Um, your nozzle and then we need to get this cap off there that's what holds your nozzle in so let's think about this how we're doing this so I'm turning that that way so it needs to go that way like that and so the right size yep So these don't always like to come off. Thanks for the vice, John. That's uh, coming handy, mate, as of, as of the work benches. Well, the generosity of people is unbelievable. Oh. That's going to be a pain in the arse. This is where I go flying. Oh. There we go. Hopefully got that in shot there. Right, lift that off there like that. You can see all the crud inside there. Just pop that there. Right, a bit more organised with my workspace today. That's it, now that's just inspect that, make sure there's no obvious big defects or anything like that on there, which there probably won't be. Check your threads in there, make sure that's all good. Just before you start, then check the threads all around there, make sure all this is all, all good and all where it needs to be, because there's no point refurbing an injector and then to find out it's knackered right at the end. So, that's that. And then we get this bit. This is the, the nozzle, the injector nozzle. Now, it's not always advisable to do that. Do you notice what I did was rub my finger over the end of it. See, there's a little pointer in the end that sticks out. That had already gone in. You don't want to blunt it. Right, so. That's the inject, uh, injector nozzle. That's pretty solid. That's not pulling out in a hurry. You can see there is quite a lot of carbon build up on there. So what we've got broken down into bits. Is that you've got your nozzle shroud if you like the bit that holds it all that holds the nozzle in the nozzle itself the body of the injector the plunger that comes all the way down and that's the job is to push 
on that is to keep pressure on on uh, on the uh, nozzle all the time. Uh, yeah, we get to the spring that holds the pressure on that. The adjuster that hold the, the, that adjusts the spring pressure on that. The cap and the uh, leak off pipe fitting banjo bolt, whatever you want to call it. Right, so. Oh, and the uh, copper washer that goes on the end, you should renew that. Well, there should always be, as well as the steel uh, crush washer that goes in, in the cylinder head that sits underneath the, the nozzle. Right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean all these up on the wire wheel there, and I'll come back to you. Right, so they've all been cleaned up on the wire wheel, best possible. But, as I said, that is still stuck in the nozzle. So, what I'm going to do is grip it with the drill as best I can. And hey, presto, out it comes. The nozzle on that, on the pin on the end of that, actually looks all right. Um, it's still got the point there. It's not worn off, they, they look relatively new. So what we're gonna do is gently put that back in. You can see now, now I've loosened it off, it spins fine, comes off fine. Just spin the drill up a little bit, don't go super fast. Up and down a couple of times like that. Frizz bird. Right, so now what I need to do is rebuild it. If you can get a torch to see down in there, then that's uh, even better. Just what I'll do as well, just while I'm thinking about it. What you can do if um, if it's a bit stiff is put some toothpaste down there. Make sure it's done all the way down, so the point's at the end. That'll do it well and good, won't it? Dropping it, always does. Always works to treat that. So I'm just trying to get actually grip it in there so it can. Yeah, if you just smear a bit, a bit of toothpaste on there, and that'll clean it up well. But that one's fine. Right, so let's get this put back together. Nozzle in there. Let's see if I can do this and keep it all keep it all in shot as well. Um, let's clean that out. Let me just go get a bit of rag too. Right, still got a bit of diesel inside there. Right, so you'll see it will only go together one way. It slots in like that, like so. The re retaining cap for the just do this hand tight for now. Right, so that's that in there. Do you expect that's got no crap on there? It's all clean, usually is, to be fair. Spring. And the adjuster. And that's all you need for now. That is all you need. So, I'll tighten that down a little bit. What I'll do is I'll just nip it in the vise and tighten that up. And uh, we'll test it. Right, let's adjust you up there so you can... You can see I've screwed it on there. Um, now let's see what uh, see what pressure we get. Oh, that's high. I don't know if you can see there, uh, it's not even popped, and I'm at nearly three thousand psi. So that's, that's at 2,000 and I don't know if that's coming up on the camera but that's a near perfect spray pattern. So it's not, you don't have to 
consist of a spray pattern. So that's consistent. Um, yeah, and that's it. That's it. Once you've done that, I'll say that's it. Last thing to do, put your copper washer on there. Tighten the cap up on the end of there. Nip it up, same way I told you in the vice, don't have to be, in fact you can wait if you want, just wait till you've got the injector in the engine and then just nip that up. Don't have to be mega tight, just literally just what's just a little, little nip. And that's it, your injector's good to go. Happy days. Right guys, I hope that's um, helped a few people out. Thanks again Tim, forever grateful mate. That is an absolute, uh, absolute uh, diamond thing to do. Um, Bit of a palaver getting it over here. It was um, it was stuck in customs for ages, and ended up getting sent back to America, and then back, uh, absolute palaver. But mate, thank you very much. Much appreciated. The hassle we went through, unbelievable. The generosity of people, it's uh, it's awesome. Right, uh, just a quick note on that engine that I was building that was here. It is now built. Um, I took it apart, I'll show you in a second. I took, in fact, I'll talk to you, talk to you while I go over there. It's down here. Um, I took it apart. You can see it's all painted up, all, all together. Um, looking, looking brand spanking new. And sorry, they ain't got, the light's not very good down this end of the shop. Um, I've got some more lights to put up there, but I haven't got around to it. What I was gonna say about that, yeah. Um, I took it apart, I couldn't find a single thing wrong with it. So um, I basically, I tested everything, there was no end flow, there was no, um, there was very little signs of anything. I put diesel down the boards, I leveled the cylinders off. It's out of my face. I leveled the cylinders off, put diesel down there. More than 24 hours later, I think it was about 28 hours later, I had to go and uh, siphon the diesel out. Uh, and that was after I'd run, I'd sort of, Come backwards and forwards with again the pistons going up and down without spilling it over the top. Um, pulled the sump off. There was no sign of anywhere, anywhere, anything inside. There was no gunk in the sump at all. I think the engine it was like brand spanking new, with the exception of the hash marks had, had worn off the side of the cylinders. But I wasn't worried about that. It wasn't. They hadn't gone completely, um, but it wasn't causing any issues or anything like that. So. Uh, yeah, I was more than happy, so I put it back together again. I didn't bother filming it because I've, I've already got loads of films out, out there of, of doing that exact thing. So, in, in better depth than what I would have gone to with that. So I just thought, you know what, it, save myself some time. Um, I'll just bang it together. If you want to, to see how that went together, um, there are other videos on my channel that do it in great, great detail. So, uh, yeah, that engine's now ready to go. That is going into, a, and I'll tell you now, um, it's a Rover project, 1950s Rover project. Um, in fact, what I'll do, I'll put a sneaky couple of pictures in. So, put, put a couple of pictures in there. That, I dare say, will be, um, I need to have a word with the owner. I'm pretty, if I've, in fact, I've had a word with the owner, actually. Um, that will be appearing on the channel. Uh, there'll be more videos in that, in, in, just going on for what it is. We've got a few things tying out with gearboxes and stuff like that. But yeah, that's having a two and a quarter diesel put into it. And uh, yeah, it's going to be a total one of a kind. Uh, stunning thing. So, yeah. Uh, where did I get to? Yeah, that's the injectors done. Any questions or anything like that, just give it a shout if anybody's stuck on anything. And like I said, as a, as, as a thank you, if anybody, I'm, I'm based in Kiverton, South Yorkshire. If anybody's got a set of injectors they want testing, bring them down, I'll test them for free. Um, I'll even use the special blend red diesel for medicinal purposes only, I'll let you know. Um, yeah, what, what, else, what else can I do? When, when I get hold of a spare set of injectors, I might do an injector giveaway or something, you know what I mean? But uh, yeah, I've, uh, I've only got a couple of injectors going spare. 
uh, and I now need one of them for this so right I've got a couple more to do thanks for watching guys don't forget to like subscribe follow us on Instagram and all that um, CSM Retro Restorations and uh, yeah look after each other take care see you soon bye bye